All right, so last night in video, right, they posted a number. Let's face it, it just blew Wall Street away, especially the revenues, $39.1 billion. I think the street was at $33 billion. So let's bring back, again, one of the smartest voices on NVIDIA. In fact, the analysts who loved it when Wall Street thought it was a fading gaming stock, uh, IO Fund, their lead tech analyst, Beth Kindig. Beth, obviously, uh, very impressive stuff. I just one thing, when I saw this, and I always see this all the time, at one point it was considered, you know, the, uh, how's the automotive business doing, right? How's the gaming business doing? How's the crypto business doing? Is, all, is this stuff irrelevant or will it ever come into play? <laughs> You're going to make a lot of gamers mad saying that. <laughs> I'm asking. <laughs> no, I, I, the one segment I would talk about is automotive, actually. Uh -huh. uh, there will be a day, this is going to shock you, there will be a day that automotive exceeds data center. It'll take about five to ten years. And that's really built into the AI software that NVIDIA has been preparing for. Uh, in fact, they've said in their investor presentations that AI software will exceed AI hardware in about five years. Wow. Is that why Jensen spent so much time talking about Tesla and robo-taxis and things like that? Absolutely, and what is unique about NVIDIA is they can use a simulation program to train these models. They have a significant advantage when it comes to automotive. All right, you had a, a few things you were hoping for, at least anticipating yesterday. We put a little checklist up because I know at the top of the list was this H20, uh, because we knew obviously that they, 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 it was interrupted, you know, they, they couldn't export it. The miss, was it bigger, larger? I mean, how did you feel about that? It came in exactly as I had expected, which was 15 billion. Now I took that from Jensen Wong's podcast, which he did about a week prior to earnings. Uh, it came in as expected. However, Blackwell shocked the market. Uh, just to put it into perspective, Charles, Blackwell, 1,000 racks in Q1, 1,000 racks in April. He just told us last night they are shipping 1,000 racks per week. This far exceeds uh, my expectation going into this and all analysts' expectations. Wow, wow. And that, of course, that brings us to the, to the biggest question of them all, data centers, right? I mean, just Wall Street keeps writing it off. The big, uh, you know, the, the big companies keep investing in these chips. And now we know it's a global race. The data center race is a global race. It's not even about business anymore. It feels like whatever country can win that race will dominate in the rest of the world. So the green folks, those are your data center numbers. It's gone parabolic. How much longer can it go on like this? You know, no growth market is infinite. This is a trap a lot of growth investors find themselves right. in. The thing about NVIDIA is they have catalysts coming, and it goes back to that AI software we talked about. Uh, AI software will exceed hardware. They are ready for this. They are the smartest in the game, and they are ready for the moment that CapEx or data centers plateau. They will move in with software, and part of that is the automotive. You know, I'm glad you, you brought that up. Uh, you know, in, in, my, in, my, in my book, I wrote about the company on the cover of Forbes magazine, January, I think it was 2007. It was the company of the year. No one ever heard of it, right? Forbes said it's the company of the year. It's trading like a 12 and a half bucks pre-split or whatever. By the end of the year, it's like a buck 50, right? And it goes nowhere. Essentially, though, that Jensen was on the cover. Essentially, with this, you're really essentially betting that this guy who is so brilliant to build this is going to be ahead of the curve on other things. Exactly. Who do you think will be first in line for AI software? The, the person who did this. Let's talk about the China comments because, you know, that's in the news right now, obviously, with the tariff battle and all these things. They spent a lot of time on China. Felt like he was trying to thread the needle a little bit or walking a tight wire. What do you think? They really, management really wants the market to see and the administration to see this is a 50 billion total addressable market. My perspective as an investor is let's put China behind us. We have a big world out there. Everyone wants China, uh, NVIDIA's chips. We don't need China. The stock, stock's up a little bit, not up as much as, uh, you know, this, I, I really, if this was a whole lot of other names, the stock would be up a whole lot more. So essentially, I mean, it's above all the key moving averages, but it made a high going back to last year. How are you feeling as an investor that the stock still gets antsy as it approaches the old high? I think that is a topic that is very important. This stock has been range bound for a year. It was at 140 in June of 2024. What I would point out is that with every revenue beat and every earnings beat, the valuation gets cheaper and cheaper. Mm. Uh, we are, I'm seeing today 50% to 75% room in the valuation because they've beat four quarters since the stock was last priced at 140. Eventually it will give. So be patient and when the next breakout happens, it'll be like one of these breakouts here. You got it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thanks. Great, hope you come back soon. Yeah, you got it. Great. Thank you.